This podcast is for singers who have music in their soul and want to be in the spotlight. We are Invictivox Radio. Welcome, everyone, to yet another episode of Invictivox (laughs) Radio. (laughs) No. We, as always, are your hosts, Mike and Angie Lee. <laughs> and <laughs> it's a little bit goofy. Um, we should have done this episode on Halloween, but uh, that, oh, oh, that would be oh well, came and went. This is perfect for Halloween. So if you're listening to this next year around Halloween time, congratulations, <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, but what we're talking about in this episode is fear is the gateway. So ultimately, fear is going to stand in the way of every single thing that you want in life. There's not one thing where, well, maybe there's like one thing that's stupid, like, well, I want to swing on that swing. And then, you know, you just go swing on it. There's like no fear associated with it. But I would say that's false. Well, I guess the first time you ever swing on a swing, it it is a little intimidating, right? Yeah. We have small children and they are still terrified of, in in a way, of the swings. Yeah. So see, fear is going to stand in the way of everything that you want to do. And the bigger the thing is that you want to do, the the bigger the thing is that you want, the more fear that's going to be associated with that. Yep. Right? It stands almost as like an arch that you have to you have to get brave and be courageous to go walk <laughs> walk through this gateway, but it's for real. It is. It and is. we've talked about it in past episodes, but it's probably one of the biggest things. Uh last episode we talked about, you know, resources that hold people back. But I would say fear and resources kind of go back and forth is like the the main things that hold people back from yeah, getting what feeling they feeling like you have a lack of resources to help you invest in yourself and then being afraid of something that potentially is very scary that stands in your way uh, a lot of a big fear that a lot of people have is the fear of failure yeah and i i think that that is one thing that holds most people back from anything is fearing that you will fall feeling that fearing that you will fail and so, yeah, I mean, there's 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 really good fears in life. Like, hey, don't walk off that cliff. Yes, you should be very afraid of the, you know, literal cliff. Don't throw your life away doing that. So that's a healthy fear. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but being afraid to take steps and to pursue what you want to, to chase down your dream and to set really scary targets that you're afraid of failing at that's the type of fear that we're talking about right now and and that fear is present for every person i mean this is such a real thing this is why people use drugs and alcohol all the time is to deaden that to get past that fear and what we want to talk about is instead of avoiding the fear instead of letting that fear get the best of you and make you quit or any of those things in between, we want to talk about how we want to walk through the fear, how we, how we get through it as it's a gateway to create way bigger and way better things for yourself. Because once you get through that gateway of fear, you open up a world of possibilities. And as you traverse through that, you create a bigger life for yourself and you create a bigger person within yourself because you have to grow and expand to do it. Yeah. And one of the big things about fear is last time we talked about all these resources, well, fear will actually hold you back from gaining some of those resources and from using them, Mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, let's say one of the biggest ones is connections, right? People are terrified to network with other people to walk up. And I'm guilty of this. Uh, As someone who was shy growing up my whole life, it's really hard for me to go up to somebody and say hi and introduce myself and, and let them know what I'm all about and get to know what they're all about, right? Or a a thing that a lot of people struggle with is um, say I have a resource and or I have a connection that can help me get to where I want to go. But I'm too scared to ask them for help to ultimately like Mm. utilize that or even just reach out to them to really strengthen your relationship so that eventually you can ask for help. Right. Or can offer something to get a leg up from them. Yeah. There's just that fear, that paralyzing fear of being embarrassed or being, which is a shy thing. Right. Yeah. Um, of of having them say no. There's that very real fear, too. Well, I, I just don't want to be rejected. I don't want to fail at this. And so we let that fear get the best of us instead of utilizing that connection. Right. And another thing is even with our money. Right. Like, oh, mm. 
I don't want to spend any money on that. Because Ooh, that's big. Because what if, what if it doesn't amount to anything? What if I lose my money? Well, we had a student and here. And I waste my money. Yeah, we had a student here at the studio who decided she didn't want to go to college after high school. And she wanted to invest all of her resources into pursuing music. And her mom was totally behind her on that. They cashed in her college savings fund to spend money on recording. And she was terrified because she's like, well, what if this doesn't go anywhere? And I looked at her and I was like, well, this is your first album. It's likely that it won't. But you still have to take that leap. And was that an amazing thing for her to invest in? Absolutely. It was a huge part of starting her journey as an artist. And it gave her a huge leg up because she got to create all this really high-end, beautiful content right out the gate. And so it's it's always scary and terrifying to take that leap. I mean, we were just talking about buying me a new recording microphone today. And we're like, man... Do we want to spend the money on that or do we want to take our kids on a vacation? <laughs> so yeah. like for real. So it's like, okay, um, that's a terrifying thing to consider. So how then do we stop fear from paralyzing us and to really push us to be able to utilize it as its own resource? How do we, how do we get through fear? Like I just said at the beginning of this episode, how do we traverse through that or walk through that chaos to become a better person on the other side and to actually achieve the next level of greatness that we're trying to achieve? Well, in each one of these layers that you walk through of fear, the more confidence you build in yourself and in your ability to do hard things, which is actually one of the best things about it, right? right. So it translates into anything you do. If you're able to to conquer that fear and the more that you're like, okay, I can get through this, I can get through this, I've done this, I've gone through this level of fear and this level of fear. Well, that translates to anything. So even if you switch paths at some point, it wasn't all for naught. No. It'll all be worth it at one point or another. But um, do you have anything to add to that? Or I want to kind of jump into the, how I attack fear. Well, that's what I really want to know is because we understand that we want to get to the other side of fear. Like, obviously, we don't want to be paralyzed by it forever. So I would love to know your take on how you walk through it. Because it's, it's nice to have this picture of, okay, I'm not going to numb myself to the fear by using, like, drugs or alcohol right. or Right, we're whatever. not using liquid courage in We're this. not, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. I'm not going to um, avoid it because it's always going to be there. If you don't face your fear, we talk about, like, you've heard that a million times in your life, face your fear. Like, if you don't face your fear, it's going to stay there. Yeah. So instead of bypassing it and my, maybe just ignoring it and letting this huge heap of fear stay over here and then taking a completely different path than the one you want to take to avoid the fear or using liquid courage or using these false things that actually give you a false sense of momentum but don't actually get you to walk through it. How do you walk through chaos? How do you stand on the other side of that and not get swept away in the current? How do you get to that other place so that you can be super solid in who you are and have expansion and growth in the process? Because I think that's what people mostly don't understand how to do is just how do I how do I get through that? And and um, and it could be something as simple as, like you said, talking to someone, yeah. putting yourself out on a limb like that. It could be le anytime you have to leap into something new, you are going to be afraid at some level. And I actually do fancy myself an expert on this topic because I've spent so much <laughs> of my life scared of everything. Like as a kid, it was like, oh, roller coasters, uh, talking to people, uh, doing, it didn't matter what ordering it was. Ordering food at McDonald's. Yeah, ordering food at McDonald's. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got to go deposit a check at the bank. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, we're talking about debilitating shyness. That was not me, by the way. I was the extreme <laughs> opposite of that. And so I, I feel like I've faced this continually through a lot of my life. So... Here's kind of the main three ways that I've gotten through this. And I think that this is these are some of the best ways to get through it is one, expose the boogeyman. And what I mean yeah. by this is like it's like in Harry Potter, right? When it's like, hey, we're going to open up the closet and this bogart, the bogart, the bogart, it, bogart, bogart is going to come out and you're going to make it look silly. Well, well, like, well, cause it comes out and it expresses itself as the thing that you're afraid of. And then it's your and then at that point you have to do a spell to make it turn it into something that you're not afraid of right. right so the biggest way to do it is actually to stare at what you're afraid of like what is it that you're afraid of actually face it down and once you actually get a good look at it and you can get a little bit of perspective on it most of the time it seems really stupid 
right? It's, it's not like, as big as you think it is. Right. It's like, oh, going up and saying hi to somebody. Okay. Like, if if someone came up and said hi to me, would I be like, that person's stupid? <laughs> or would you just be, you know what I mean? Or would you yeah. just be like, hey, hi, you know, and just respond back. And that's how most people are going to do it. And so you have, that's what it, you have to expose it and then get some perspective, twist it a little bit, try and look at it from a different angle and see how really ridiculous it is that you're even scared of that. Yeah. I think that's a really good thing to point out is like the perspective of the fear, because in your mind as a shy person, when you're like, Oh, I can't say hi to somebody. The reason you feel that way is because you have some limiting stories that go on in your head to make you think that they're going to think you're stupid. Yeah. Like, what if, what if they don't like me? What if I say it wrong? What if I accidentally slip? What if, and you have all these what if scenarios going through your head that you're not even aware of. And so you have this very distinct perspective on, okay, I cannot say hi to this person because of this, 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 and this, and this. But it's like you said, what if you step back and be like, huh? Another perspective is, okay, them approaching me. Would I think they were stupid? No, I wouldn't think that was stupid. And, and this is a very simple scenario, right? We're talking about someone who's shy, who doesn't want to talk to someone. But if you, you can take that to any fear-based scenario and go, man, I don't want to spend my money on that microphone because then I might not be able to take my family on vacation. And what if the microphone doesn't work very well? And what if the da 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 right? Right. But what if you step back and you go... What is possible if I buy the microphone? What is possible for me if I'm not afraid to make this investment in a better piece of equipment? What is then possible for me to create on the other side of that? And so, like you said, it's flipping that perspective to not just to look at the fear, but then also rotate it and look at all the different sides of that fear and kind of debunk your own fear. Right. Yeah, or pitching somebody on something, right? Like pitching to a label or a manager. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is so scary. But you got to remember, that's their job. Their job <laughs> is to listen to people pitch and then pull out the right ones. So just go in there with confidence and, and knowing that, hey, everybody goes through this. Everybody has to has mm. to go through this at some point if you're going that route. So be as prepared as possible and just give it hell. Uh, like I always like to say, grip it and rip it, right? So, <laughs> uh, so go for it and just give it your all and know that that's their job and they're not going to judge you and it, it may go good, it may go bad. You'll have other opportunities in the future though. Yeah, so expose the boogeyman. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is play out the worst case scenario. Okay, so oh, yeah, again, you're the king of this. I, Mike's done this to me from the moment we met. He's always like, oh, it can't be that bad. What's the worst thing that can happen? And everyone always says that. What's the worst that could happen? But have you actually thought about the worst case scenario of what could happen if you take the leap? Right. And we've done this with financial decisions in the past, right? Like, it's like, oh, my gosh, what if I spend money on a microphone? Now it's not like, oh, OK, um, like we can't go on vacation with our kids. It's like, oh, what if something were to cascade and it gets all crazy and we go bankrupt and lose our house? Well, then what do we do at that point? It's like, okay, well, home isn't where we live. Home is just wherever we are as a family. So now we can regroup, get a smaller apartment, make things work and be happy in the journey of life. Wow, that came really quick from a microphone. Yeah, I, <laughs> and I'm just throwing that out there with a lot of well, financial decisions that yeah. people make. Like, are you willing to take well, the leap? Okay, we've actually taken the leap several times, even with just starting Invictivox, of like second mortgaging our home and like doing making some big financial moves to get money to be able to invest and have some capital. And every single time it's so freaking terrifying. Yeah. Right? It's terrifying because it's like, what's the worst that could happen if I take a second mortgage on my home and everything falls through? Well, and there's a reason that a lot of millionaires have gone bankrupt before they hit their millions. Um, yeah, because you have to fail at least once to be able to succeed. Guys, just remember that. Like the first time you send a demo into a label, no one's going to listen to it. So just just vibe on that, okay? Failure is necessary. That's part of the fear. That's part of walking through it. But yeah, what's the worst case scenario of us second mortgaging our home and investing in our company? What is it? Losing our house, right? Right. Going bankrupt, losing our house, losing our brick and mortar, losing all of our equipment, losing everything we've invested in. And you look at that and that's very bleak and you're like, holy crap, I cannot make this investment. I cannot walk through this chaos. This is too much. And that's when most people say, okay, I can't do it, right? I, I can't do it. This, this is too much. This is too big of an ask. This is too scary. 
and or you choose to double down because you look at it and go worst case scenario is we go bankrupt we lose our house and then what is like you said what the important thing is we have our family home is where we make it we'll get ourselves a nice little town home we'll rent right and, yeah. and we'll make it happen. And so that that is, I just wanted to paint that on a more severe level because we've actually faced that down twice so yeah, far. Yeah, that scenario, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've actually faced down that scenario twice already in the last three years. So... <laughs> yeah, and when you first do it... It's terrifying. You may have to take an inhaler at night because you can't breathe. <laughs> 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 just from from personal experience maybe maybe it's the same for you maybe it's not but uh, like, i feel like i'm drowning in air right now <laughs> yeah and it's horrible but and it may not conquering your fear at first is not going to feel that extreme you guys it's going to be more like a i need to talk to someone type of fear but just know like the idea of walking through the worst case scenario is going to give you you're going to feel settled. Do I want to lose the home I'm raising my children in? No, but will that be the end of the world for us? Absolutely not. And are we going to stand up again and try again? Yep, we are because that's who we are. And so if that's something that, that resonates with you, then you, you move. If you can figure out the worst case scenario of your decision and still be okay with it, you can walk through the fear. Yeah. Or let's take it, maybe not lose your house, but like, okay, I took out, I was going to go to college. I'm not going to college. I took that, that money that I had saved up. Mm -hmm. Now we're spending it on this. What if nothing comes of it? Yeah. Okay. Well, money comes and goes. You just got a good fresh start or a good start to learn a lot in the beginning, right? You were able to use that resource to gain Mm -hmm. kind of a leg up. Well, now go work your ass off, make more money and go after it again. It's just keep looking at it from what is the worst case scenario and is it that bad? If it won't absolutely destroy you, go for it. Yeah. At least. And then remember in the process, you're going to fall on your face a few times and that it's necessary. Now, oh. that being said, if you do go into a financial situation, <laughs> remember, we're not financial advisors on this show. <laughs> we just give our opinions on how we th- how we approach life. <laughs> so don't come after us with lawsuits. I like know. Invictavox told us. <laughs> And Victorbox told me to take a second mortgage on my house and yeah. I lost everything. So again, we, <laughs> we are not financial <laughs> consultants or advisors. <laughs> All right. Nope. <laughs> and the third way I approach things is I lean into people. I lean into the people around you notice, me. I want to just point out your body language because that was so stinking cute. You went, we lean into people and he leaned into me oh i love it <laughs> oh well i do lean into you all the time anytime the time. i'm getting freaked out about something I, you're the first person i bring it up to um yep. but that's Vice one versa. of the cool things about about having friends that you can relate to or talk to or here at invictivox we have our um we have a network where people it's like our own social media where people Mm -hmm. can communicate and really bring up whatever they want and they can bring it up to their coaches or whatever it may be. Right. So if you have a group of people where it's like, Oh, I'm terrified of this. And what you find is most people have actually gone through similar things or are going through the same thing and you're not alone in this fear. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it surrounded by people who are like-minded is what yeah. you're saying, or people who have been there who understand it or uh, who understand the type of fear you're going through because there's so many different types of fear. Right. So it's important to surround yourself with people who understand or have um, same kind of mindsets as you do that can, or who have the same type of goals as you that can give you really good feedback and someone you can lean, lean into. Yeah, or it's like, hey, yeah, I went through that such a situation. Here's how I got through it. No big deal, mm-hmm. right? And the more people that can kind of help you through it encourage you through it um really it helps kind of bolster your confidence and and work through it as well plus you have sounding boards to work i was just gonna say that yeah and it just makes it a lot easier and you'll you'll almost always find that you're never alone in any circumstance right like Mm. people have already gone through it way more than you think to to think that you're going through something all by yourself that, that no one else has gone to through. <laughs> it, 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 I've actually heard about this is like, you wouldn't think about it this way, but it's like, it, it's actually your ego that mm. plays into that. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause it's gotta be like, Oh, well what I'm going through, no one else has ever gone. Nobody through. understands this, but me. So in that situation, you got to understand that's just your ego talking, but lean into your resources, lean into the people around you that can help you out. If you don't have somebody like that, go out and go out and find that resource, go out and find help. I mean, if you're looking for that and, and you have feel like you have nowhere else to go, come here. Come, yeah, we got it. We come, got you. <laughs> come and join the Invictivox <laughs> family. We'll help you out. Well, no. And the thing is, is I, like you bring up, 
that feeling is almost the the fear of solid being solitary being alone because no one else understands what you're going through and it, that very well may be the case for you right now if you are in a town where no one else in the town is doing what you're doing and your family doesn't get it and your friends don't get it but you have the singular focus of being a musician and it's just not, you're not getting any support around that. You're going to be way more fearful to make moves. And so that's why it's so important to have a community of people around you who understand what you're trying to do and support it. Because standing alone, facing the fear alone, facing the next leap that you have to take feels impossible because your ego, like you said, plays into it. But it's also this idea of, of, of solitary movement. And it's, it's scary because you feel like you have no foundation. And so if you have a group of people that you can lean into who can, there's, you know, there's going to be some people in that group that have been on the other side of that fear and they're like, hey, come on, you can do this. Look at me. I made it. Right. Um, or there's the people that are standing on the other side with you like, OK, let's do this together. Let's go. Yeah. You know, and having that support or people that just understand you can listen to you and give you feedback that is applicable to your life and not just hey you shouldn't do that that's kind of scary are you gonna spend your money on music that just seems kind of frivolous that's not a real career like there's a lot of that right so it's (laughs) it's this idea of having people who can support you to walk through the chaos who have been there or who are going to walk through it with you so that you can just lean into others as you take that path yeah And with that, I want to just bring up the question for today. Absolutely. Is, okay, first thing, where is fear holding you back, right? Like, where are you afraid to go right now? What is that that gateway of fear that you know you need to walk through? What step are you not taking because you're afraid? Right. And number two, which one of those three methods can you use to get through that, to navigate through that and to get out on the other side? So it's expose the boogeyman. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. And, and lean into people. Lean into others. So those are the three things you can do to walk through that fear. Maybe you need a combo of those. You know, maybe one of them isn't enough. Maybe this this gateway of fear is just way too much. And you got to have more, you know. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what. do them all. I just pictured the never-ending story when he has to walk through the gateways. Oh. Remember what we're talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like the Sphinx things that like shoot lasers Laser. at them. <laughs> Laser eyes. If you guys haven't seen the never ending story from the 80s, we make sure you go watch that. It's a great, <laughs> <laughs> terrible, yeah. awful, but, amazing flick that you should all witness. Yeah, it's glorious. But uh, don't yeah. be afraid to walk through the gateways. <laughs> Anyways, everybody, uh, <laughs> as, as, as always, um, I'll train you. Please share. No, it's Artex. Sorry. Artex. I try you. Anyway. Yep. Anyways, uh, if, if this episode has brought you any value <laughs> and you like it and appreciate it and you feel like we're awesome, um, please like, share, or subscribe. Or if you don't feel like we're awesome, you can do that too. Yeah. No, but no, we're awesome. No matter what. Even yeah, if we're you're good. like, oh, these guys suck. But hey, you should go listen to our podcast. <laughs> Anyways, please like, subscribe, share, do all those things. Help us grow this podcast uh, so we can just help as many people as possible. And until next time, as always... Peace. Peace.